Well, hello, Stampers, and happy hump day. Today is Wednesday, June 29th, and we are almost through the month of June, which is it's just plain crazy. My name is Colleen Magnus, and today you are creating with Colleen. I come to you live every Wednesday. Hopefully you've had a great busy morning. You're ready to get your lunch, take a break, and I'll create for you. So I am on uh, the east coast of Chesapeake in Virginia, and it is an awesome day here today. So today, we are going to kind of continue. I really can't call it continuing a series, but I can't seem to stop creating with this soft seedlings stamp set here. It is beautiful and just so much fun. Of course, you know, I love everything fall. Even though we're in the middle of summer, I can still love fall. So last week, we created this card, and it used the Soft Seedlings uh, stamp set, but also it featured the 3D uh, falling embossing folder on here. So with the folder, it's actually called Leaf Fall, and it's just so hard to see in the catalog. So that's why I wanted to share it to you and show it to you. Um, so this is all on page 53, and this is above the stamp set, but it's hard to see. So just know if you're going to get the Soft Seedling stamp set, you also want to purchase that folder to go with it. So every week, if you leave a comment, share, like my Facebook page while I'm live, I draw, do a drawing for a name. So this card will go to from last week to Danette Linville. So Danette, if you will private message me um, your um, address, I would be more than happy to send this card to you. And thank you so much for joining me on my Wednesday Facebook Live. So now today, today we are going to do another technique because I, again, I just think this stamp set lends itself to so many techniques. And this is called Emboss Resist. So today I'm gonna to show you how to create this card and it just creates such a beautiful background. I hope you like it. So welcome Barb and Edith. Um, Okay, it's so funny. Edith has already ordered this. Gwen has already ordered this. So you gals are now stocking your ups man, aren't you? I know we get to, as demonstrators, place a um, order. Of course, with all of you, the new catalog goes live. So we've been able to pre-order, but you can bet I have orders going in this Friday the 1st because that's when the July through December mini catalog goes live along with celebration. I have been fine-tuning my wish list. Um, and so I can't wait. I have been a demonstrator for over 20 years and I still get excited about new product. It just keeps getting better and better. So, hey, Ellen, I'm glad you're here. Everybody's popping on. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating. And um, if I miss you, just know I appreciate you being here, but I'll try to keep an eye on my comments also. So again, this card is created called Emboss Resist. And the reason it is because the white uh, leaves here, I have embossed those, and actually they're very vanilla because I embossed it on vanilla cardstock. But these are embossed, so whenever you stamp or sponge, we are sponging with a um, water-based ink, and that is not gonna stick to your embossed image. So that's why it's Emboss Resist. And there are so many different techniques you can do with this. I'm just gonna keep playing. And I have a class coming up this, uh, actually next month, July, which feels like it's almost here. Um, and I'll give you more information about that after we create. So welcome Linda and Sandy, I'm so glad you are with me. And let me tell you, the nice thing about doing technique cards, the cutting is pretty basic that you're doing. Um, for here, again, just three sheets, a card base, a backed piece in the front, and pretty much with this. So what we are using today is we are going to take, let me get my little parts here. We are gonna take a piece of eight and a half by five and a half soft suede, and that is scored at four and a quarter. So it just makes for an easy fold, and you'll just wanna take your bone folder and give that a crease. Then you are going to need a piece of five and a quarter by four inch pool party. So that'll go on there. You will need two pieces of very vanilla. And I'm gonna be honest with you, you know I'm the drafter. 
If you just want to cut your two pieces five inches by three and three quarters, it's going to work just fine. I wanted just a little bit smaller of an edge of my pool party, so I cut mine five and one sixteenth by three and three sixteenths. It just comes natural here in Stamp Room, but just know a sixteenth of an inch doesn't make that big of a difference. So five by three and three quarters will also work for you. Then you are just going to need a scrap of pool party. So we are going to work on our front first. So what I'm doing is I wanted, um, I'm capturing this very vanilla underneath my embossed leaves. So what I'm going to do is use very vanilla ink, Versamark, which is a clear sticky ink, and then I am going to use clear embossing powder. So really, I could do these leaves any color I want based on the background that I do them on because this is almost like a window. By doing it with clear embossing powder and clear ink, I am gonna capture and see whatever is underneath. So what I'm gonna do first is um, we have here, this is older, but I'm, I know you can get excited. This is kind of like a great little embossing toolkit that you need. So I had uh, bought this little tray years ago and everybody loved them. And the reason you love it is because you can shake your embossing powder in here. Then you take this little plug out right here, shake it out, put it right back in your container. So when Stampin' Up! did away with these, everybody was a little bit bummed if they didn't already have one. Well, I'm here to tell you in the new July through December mini catalog on page 49, they have an uh, embossing additions toolkit. And what's so exciting, Looks like this little tray right here. You're also going to get an embossing buddy, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Then you're going to get crafting tweezers, which are the best. And then you will also get a brush to brush off any extra embossing powder that you have. So if you don't have this, just know you'll be able to get it starting this February on the 1st. This February, this Friday on July 1st. So I have my very vanilla. An embossing buddy is just like a light powder in there. I just give a little bit of a tap. We used to call this like a, uh, a pounce pad whenever we used to do drafting. Um, again, I was a drafter for many, many years, and I started out on the board. So we used to do pen and ink and vellum. You know, it wasn't rock and chisel, so don't make me too old. But yes, it was before the days of AutoCAD, which I eventually had to switch over. So you were just putting it on here. So it's just a light powder so that the embossing powder pretty much sticks to what is wet and not leave speckles all over your paper. So I've hit that with my embossing buddy. Next, I'm gonna take Versamark because it is just kind of like a clear glycerin type ink. And I'm just gonna ink this up. And you really don't see much of it. Um, when you're doing it, you kind of have to get it in the light. So hopefully you will be able to see it. I don't know if you can see right there. So I'm going to put three leaves here. And I see Barb has already, Barb has already shared the page. She wants a chance at this card. <laughs> Good job, Barb. I appreciate it. Yes, and if you have shared it, type in there that you shared it and then this one here. So again, it's really kind of hard to see it unless you have it in the light. What you have um, worked with your Versamark, what you have stamped. So then I'm gonna take my embossed image, not my embossed, my stamped image, and I'm gonna sprinkle on my clear embossing powder. And again, you can really sprinkle it liberally on there because you are going to shake it off. So here I have it. And now you could probably see, let me see, I'll try to look. You can kind of see where they are. So if I really wanted to put another little something down here, I could. But I think, I think I'll leave that. So now I'm going to emboss. Now when I emboss, I like to one, take a piece of cardboard, that I have here. And what I've done is just taken the cardboard and covered it with tin foil. And I like to do that because it gives me a place to um, 
hold it. It gives me some stability here. Plus it kind of reflects the heat also on the background. So I am debating, y'all know me, I'm debating, gosh, do I want to? Nope, 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 don't do it. I was gonna put a little more of a leaf here, but then I get too many leaves. You'll see what I'm talking about. So then I'm gonna take this little tweezers, which I love. And again, you can get this in the kit, but I like it because it's it automatically clamps itself. I don't have to hold it. When you're embossing, it's a very high heat and you don't want your fingers to get in the way. Um, it's not like a blow dryer, a little bit hotter than that. I don't recommend using this on your hair. Um, it'd be frizzled and frazzled in no time. So this is our embossing gun. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and start it up and let it get hot for a minute. And then I've seen some people when they emboss, they kind of go all over. I prefer to concentrate on one part and then move it. Because if you go all over, it's kind of hard to see what is melting at the time because you're actually melting this powder. But since it gets shiny when I do it, it's easier just to follow it all the way across and then I know it is all embossed. So let it heat up a minute. And then I will put it on here. If you, I'll try to get up close, see if you can see that. So if you can see it start to get shiny, then you know that powder is melting. And if you can't, just trust me, it is melting. And see, I'm just going across to make sure that I get it all. Because if you don't, you're going to end up just wiping that powder off. And you want it to be melted and sealed. All right, I think that can work. Now, I also want to warn you about another thing. Don't over emboss. If you kept too much heat on this, you could actually, whoops, it goes my light. If you had too much heat on this, then you could actually emboss it to where it's completely flat. And if you're doing that, um, you're not going to have an embossed image. Kind of defeats the purpose. So that is my embossed image there. Let me see. I saw a couple other people. Hey, Cindy, I'm glad you're here. Robin is watching from California Central Valley. Robin, I'm so glad you have started your vacation, and I know you're going to have a great, great time. So here I have my embossed image. Now I can still add a little bit of stamped images on here too. So I'm going to take my little whirly bird and some soft suede. I'm glad you're here, Joyce. Good to see you. And I'm just going to stamp a couple of these little whirly birds in here just to fill in a little bit of space. Nothing too crazy. It's always There's always a fine line when you're stamping. Let me just put one up here. Okay. Now, since I did stamp on a few of the images, I just like to take a paper towel. This is classic ink, so it's dried. But just kind of dab it or rub it off any place that you might have um, stamped because again it is a classic ink and it's not going to dry um, water based ink on where you embossed. So now I'm going to take my pool party and my blending brush and I'm going to come in here and I'm just ever so lightly I start light and then I push down a little bit more so I don't get like any really strong um, brush marks on here. But you can see how these embossed images are starting to emerge. It's resisting that ink. So I come in here. It's quiet when I do this. <laughs> So I'm bringing in some of that pool party and watching my leaves pop. It's really, it's a lot of fun. So I will take my uh, paper towel, just wipe off. So if there was anything not dry, um, you're gonna have it on here. Joyce says, you are making me buy this stamp. Joyce, just do it. Just do it. 
I've been stamping for a long time, and I think this one's a keeper. You will love it. So now I'm going to come in with some crumb cake. I'll dab that. And again, start light. And then you can apply a little pressure. I've got my fingers on the head of this brush, and that really is controlling how hard that I push down. So I'm just bringing a little bit of soft crumb cake in here. I love crumb cake and pool party together with soft suede. Alrighty, come around. Um, Joyce wants to know if she has to be light-handed. Well, Joyce, I've seen light-handed and I've seen heavy-handed in stamping. And I think I can honestly say um, light-handed is probably better in like 95% of what you do. Whether it's stamping so you don't get the edge of a stamp, whether it's stamping in an ink pad so you don't make a mess. Um, I know light-handed can be hard for some, but if you need special tutoring classes, let me know. We'll get you there. So I'm just going to come in and just darken this just a little bit more. But that, pretty much in a nutshell, is one way to do emboss resist. So now, I always like a little bit of speckle. So I'm going to go back to my crumb cake. Now, the Soft Seedlings does not have speckles in it, but the Forever Fern does. So this is a bundle that carried over, and it really is also a beautiful stamp set. And I'm gonna use those little speckles right there. So I will just kind of tap off. Just kind of makes it a little bit more natural. But I'll warn you, you do have to be careful because it's like a fine line between some really sweet speckles and a snowstorm. So you don't want snowstorms on your fall card. And honestly, okay, one more. I'm gonna stop there. Again, watch that fine line. So this is what I have up close for my card. So now I'm going to take a few things here. I'm gonna take my pool party and I will go ahead and attach this to my pool party. I think I can move this now, at least for the moment. So this was my, um, come on baby, my four and a quarter by four. Get me going there. Come around. Oh, goodness. Got some operator error going on today. Here we go. So five and a quarter by four was the pool party. I will put this on here. Turn it over just in case anything's on my hands. And then, of course, I have my card base, which is just a half a sheet of um, eight and a half by 11. Why is this doing this today? She's been good all day. Okay. And then I'll put it on here. So there is my card, but now I wanna put my saying on there. So I'm going to take that scrap piece of pool party and I'm gonna take the soft suede. And then I'm gonna need your opinion because whenever I stamp words, I rarely stamp them on colored cardstock. I like my words on very vanilla or with um, basic white. So, but I did, wasn't sure how well it showed up. So for this, I'm just doing just an easy sloppy cut around my words. And the reason I did that, because if I did it on just a solid strip of cardstock, I felt like it um, took up too much of my card and I didn't want that. I really want this technique to show through on the front. So I'm just coming around, very casual, very easy. Okay. So here, like I did on the first one, I put thinking of you like that. 
but I also have the thinking of you in vanilla. So with my eyes, that's really what's more pleasing to my eyes is the very vanilla. But I felt like the pool party thinking of you stood out more. So which one do y'all think I should do? Or actually, I can do one of each. And then when you leave your comments, you can go ahead and tell me if you want the very vanilla or the pool party for the person that I draw. So Gwen is sharing, she says, two techniques I struggle with, blending and heat embossing. I tend to stay away from it, but love this card, so I need to just do it. Aw, thanks for the inspiration. You know, Gwen, you do need to just do it. Um, it's, you know, I was thinking the other day, whether you're learning how to use your blends or your coloring techniques, experience really does make a difference. Uh, if you're like me, you probably just want to do it perfect the first time, and I totally get that. But experience is a great teacher, and the more you do it, the better it will get. And as I had showed you on the embossing, to me, it's so much easier to just work at a corner and watch that embossing powder melt because you really want to see it melt. And I think that's where people make a mistake. And once you see it melting, keep moving across your card. Don't overdo it because you will unemboss what you embossed just from the heat. And then you got to start all over again. So Gwen, keep in touch and let me know how you make out with your embossing. And as always, if you have any questions, just reach out. So Alan says a very vanilla. She likes how I fussy cut in the verse. Thank you. Um, okay, well, good. Then it's not just me. Gwen also likes a vanilla, although she likes both. I just, my words, I really, I don't know if it's because I had old eyes or I just like my words on a lighter background. So here I'll go ahead and I'm using my champagne rhinestones, which always goes with absolutely everything. I would not be caught without them. So I'm gonna pop three little rhinestones on here. Wait though, we still have to do the inside. So this is the front of the card. And again, that is called emboss resist. And then I have the same size for the um, front as I do the inside. And I want to go ahead and kind of do like I did last week and make it a um, multi-color leaf. So you'll see what I mean. So since I have Versamark on here, I wanna go ahead and wash this. And this is my chamois and it took me forever to use the chamois um, because they just look nasty. I'm telling you, they look nasty because your ink grabs in there. But they are the best things. They will clean a stamp immediately and all that ink stays inside. That's why they look like that. The old pads that we used to have, um, it's kind of like a velvet and you rubbed it, but the ink stayed on top. And I tell you, half the time I think my stamp was dirtier when I finished cleaning it than when I cleaned it. So this is my chamois. Love it. And I just keep it in a clear clay case. So Cindy wanted to know what I use to apply the rhinestones. Cindy, this is our pick a tool. And this is a great tool. You have um, a paper piercer on one end. This is great if you ever have to get underneath some place where you actually glued it down and you don't want it there anymore. Um, it also comes with a stylus. So the stylus has a small and a large end, which just gets put right inside there. And then you have this here. And this is great. There's actually like a little bit of gummy in there. And so you just twist it. You can actually get a refill for this. And that's what picks up your rhinestones, which is absolutely fantastic. Because my fingers, um, my fingers don't do, uh, you know, little well. And I only turn it out a little bit because it really wants to come out. Um, so Barbara says they are the best. Yes, if you don't have a pick a tool, they um, are only $10. So Joyce, you were asking how long does it last? If you're talking this refill, I've never had to refill it yet. So I would say a long time. And um, Ellen loves her chamois. I do too, Ellen. Again, it took me a little bit to use it, but I love my chamois and that's the only way that I clean my stamps now. 
So going back to this, I have um, my piece. Let me put this back underneath here. I am going to take my leaf and I'm actually going to ink it in pool party. So I'm putting my pool party on here. Then I'm going to take a sponge dauber with the crumb cake. So I want my pool party on the edges. Last time I put um, my crushed curry on the inside and my cherry cobbler on the outside. So since it's already inked in pool party, the um, inside here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the crumb cake. I'm gonna do the crumb cake on the stems, a little bit on the edge, And you never know what you get till you get ready to huff it and put it down. So this is a water base ink. I don't have to worry about it drying because I'm going to moisten it with my breath. I'm going to go, huff, huff. not blow. You're going to huff. I'd show you, but it's really not attractive. So I'm just going to huff right there and put my leaf here. And voila. You've got a really pretty variegated leaf that softens it up. Sometimes you get a little bit more of the um, crumb cake. Sometimes you get a bit less, but I like having it two-tone on the card. So I think I saw Joyce wanted to know, no, how long does the chamois last? Joyce, that is my original chamois. I don't know if it will ever die. Um, eventually I might want it to look a little prettier and I might get a new one, but all I do is rinse it out and continue using it. It's, it's really a great way to clean your stamps. Um, so Cheryl says she completely forgot about this technique. It is great. Thank you, Cheryl. And I'm glad you are coming to the class. So this is our emboss resist card. And again, leave a comment. Um, please share, let me know if you like the vanilla or the pool party. And I'm going to tell you about the class because you still have time to sign up. So in the class, it's called the soft seedlings technique class. And that's because every card you create is going to be a different technique. Now you might want to know, okay, which techniques? Do you know me ladies? I'll let you know when I figure them out because I am having so much fun doing so many techniques that... I will pick my four favorites, and that's what you'll get to do. So here in the class, you are going to get the Soft Seedling Stamp Set. You are also going to receive the Leaf Fall 3D Embossing Folder, and you're going to get a half a pack of the red and green um, little backed pearls here. Now, please know, if you can't make this class in person, you can get this as a kit to go. So on this class here, um, these products alone, if you were to purchase them of a cut as a customer, it's $39.42. So that's your value just in product. The class is only $48. And again, you will make four technique cards. And I'm also going to give you written directions for each technique so that you can start building a technique library of your own. Because once you learn the technique, you can create with anything. And I love that. So I'm offering a special. I call it an early bird special, but y'all know me, I will offer the special up until the last day to sign up for the class, which is July 9th. And that is if you place a minimum $25 order in addition, addition to taking the class, you can select a level one celebration item. Normally you would have to place a minimum $50 order to get that. But if you're taking the class, all you have to do is place a minimum $25 order and you'll get a celebration item, a level one. If you place a minimum $70 order for, with the class, then you get either two level one celebration items or one level two. Now you cannot place these orders online. You must send your order to me and I will have all your products at the class. So again, keep in mind now the 10 o'clock class is filling up. If I need to open a two o'clock class, I will, but only if I have um, a couple people in there. And if not, always get it as a class to go because this way you will have everything you need to create your projects. The other thing I wanted to remind you of is that this is the last week of our kit sale. 
where you buy a kit, get a kit free, and Stampin' Up! was gracious enough that they are going to give you that half off. I'm sorry, I said free. It's not free. <laughs> I hear the kids downstairs and I'm thinking, oh, I need to wrap this up. Um, but as long as they stay downstairs, we're fine. Buy a kit, get a kit half off, which is still an amazing deal. And what is so awesome about it is that Stampin' Up! is going to give you that half price item off the more expensive kit. So don't forget that those kits are there. We have wonderful kits. We have kits you don't even have to stamp. So one of the kits that I love that involved no stamping at all was the Notes of Cheer card kit. It's nine cards. This kit is only $12. And the cards, they come with beautiful envelopes. It's like so. So I'm gonna see if I, I meant to take these out ahead of time and I didn't, so I'm hoping we don't get a glare. So this is one of the cards. It's actually a beautiful butterfly. Let me show you that. I will take it out. So here we have You Make My Life Brighter. Very cute card. So all I had to do was take the saying that I wanted, put some dimensionals. It comes with everything you need. The dimensionals, the rhinestones, the pre-printed items. So I have this, but if you want to dress it up a little bit, all I did here was just cut a piece of Mossy Meadow cardstock, put it on my card, and then put my butterfly on that. So whether you want to keep it for the beginner stamper or for the avid stamper, it's easy to dress up and everything is so much easy. So this here is called a little note of cheer. Absolutely beautiful. Again, you're all your card bases and you have your envelopes. Put this on here. If I want to step it up, again, just do the cardstock. A little note of cheer, and I'm back to this also behind some cardstock. So, same card, very easy, no stamping. So, these make great gifts for everyone. Don't, don't, uh, you know, start your, go ahead and start your Christmas shopping in June and be ahead of the game. Now, this card I absolutely loved. I didn't do anything to it. It didn't need anything. The card base already comes in the rainbow colors. The uh, butterflies are already cut out. Put that on with my dimensionals, and you have that there. So that is celebration. And a, uh, celebration. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to read my comments. Let me ask, answer my comments. Uh, Cindy wants to know, do the celebration deals apply to the Go classes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, they do. So if you get a class to go, send me that additional $25 or $70 order, and you will get that along with everything for the class. I had Celebration on the mind looking at her comment. So um, I did want to share one other kit with you. I think I shared it before, but how fun. This kit is only $25, and you can get it half off for the $12.50 by buying two kits. Um, it's called Love This Memory Notebook. So this is, Zoe does not watch my lives that I know of. She's my nine-year-old granddaughter. So I am going to give this to her at the lake when we go in August. So you have this really cool notebook with all these pages that she can journal. You have tear and tape, washi tape. You get the clear block. The um, parakeet party ink. And an 18-piece stamp set. But... Here, you also get pockets. You get all kinds of little cards to decorate your pages. I mean, she is going to love this. You have stickers. Um, then you have these awesome white pieces that you can stamp all your words on. So she has one of those little cameras that you can actually take pictures of. It's like a little Polaroid. And I'm buying her an extra pack of film. And we are going to be... Uh, doing our lake trip together and making those memories and keeping those memories where we can go back and look at them. So that is what I have today. Gwen, I'm glad you learned a lot. Um, I used to do te technique classes all the time. And as I had said, I kind of got away from them because I'm such a special fold junkie. I love special folds. But I have to admit, I'm really enjoying the techniques. So let me check my comments. Um, oh, Diane likes a pool party. Very good. And Linda prefers a vanilla. So I will draw someone's name and announce who that is, who gets their choice of card for next week.
But if there's anything I could do for you, if you would like to place an order and your order is under $150, please use my host code right here. And you can request my newsletter, creatingwithcolleen.com, and you can also shop there also. And don't forget, I do have a YouTube channel. Everything I do is Creating with Colleen. So I appreciate each and every one of you joining me today. I've had a good time, and I hope you have too. And I will see you next Wednesday in July, which is just crazy, and we will create together again. Let me know if there's ever anything I could do for you. I'm always here to help. So God bless you, and I hope you do something creative today. Bye-bye.